Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, you can expect to see a couple more of these videos. Um, well, there's certainly one more of these um, on, on Spectrum Plus 2 belt. Um, as you can see, um, I've got the data set, Commodore CT um, data set uh, in bits here. Um, and this is sort of an accidental video, in, in a sense, really, in that I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I mean, the belt's a bit looser, I don't know if you can see that. There's a bit of play in it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an old belt, it's probably the original belt that's been on this since day one. Um, I've got Ghosts and Goblins that I want to have a play on uh, just to test it because I haven't got around to actually trying it yet, um, which I showed in one of my recent pickup videos. Um, but I ordered uh, for the Plus 2 a new belt because one or two of the tapes that I've got on there um, it struggles halfway through. You know, the tape will get sort of 50% of the way through and it sounds okay, and then it suddenly starts to slow down. You can hear it audibly slowing. Um, so I did order a belt for the Plus 2. Now, the seller um, inadvertently sent me this belt which I measured up against the plus two, and I think the plus two belt, if you were to, if I sort of put it like that, um, let me just move it so you can see it, if I just put this belt there, the plus two belt, if it's stretched out the same way, it comes to about where my finger is there, so it's about, oh, I don't know, 33% or 30% smaller, um, so that is not a plus two belt, and I contacted the seller, he went away and checked, I did, I did take some photos to show him and he was like, oh hang on a minute, that's a Commodore 64 belt, I don't know how I've done it, but I've sent you a C64 belt, so I did offer to send it him back, um, and he's like, oh no, no, you can keep it, and I was like, well, it's only the cost of a stamp, he's like, no, no, it's not worth the effort, just just keep it, now it was a couple of quid, so I thought, well, you know, he's going to lose out, So, and I can use this effectively, it'd be a good idea to replace this belt on my C64 um, cassette player here, so what I'm going to do is uh, have a go at fitting this now, um, and if it works, I'll send the guy uh, a couple of quid just to um, cover it, really, because uh, he's going to put me a plus two belt in the post. He's probably already done that actually today. Um, now, immediately, uh, this looks pretty straightforward because you could just you could pull the belt off at this point here. Probably, let's just try that. See if I can. Just, yeah, you go. Um, and then you could pull it around that way, pull it off there. But then you caught here. Now there is. Uh, hmm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. I've got the feeling you've probably got probably got to take these two. Certainly that screw there probably that screw there and then this should just lift off but it's held with that spring and obviously there's some, it's part of the mechanism here so you've got to be a bit careful how we do this so um, I'll have a go just do, I'll move those screws for or that one first certainly and then that one and we'll just see where we go right so I've got the screws out there uh, just zoom in a bit so you can get a slightly better view um, when you get this that, that's this, this one screw out here because that's all I've done is taken the, the, the small one at the end the one out of here then this just lifts up really carefully like, and it's held on by that spring and at that point you'll free the belt up so uh, let's just compare these just to see if they are similar size yeah they're identical oh, shit I'm gonna mix them up now uh, I'm not sure which is which let's just have a look Hang on. I think this one's the new one so um, yeah should be pretty straightforward to get back on um, the main thing is you've got to get you go through that little guide thing before you reattach the bracket so let's just do that and then put the bracket back in place and um, hopefully it's uh, going okay. Right, so before you put this um, screw back in, just make sure you get the little washer on there and you can see it's like indented, you know, there's a, it's narrower, there's a narrower piece if you like on the side that mates with the uh, fit in the case and it goes into the little groove, so, you know, it's just the same size there to allow it to slide up and down. Um, I would suggest you don't over tighten that either, otherwise you might cause problem with this mechanism moving because it is designed to move. Okay, I didn't film that because that was a little bit fiddly, but um, yeah, it's just a case of, like I said, just getting it lined up um, to the little hole on the inside and just, you know, tighten it up, but don't do it too tight because um, I suspect that this has to, to move. I might be wrong, it just looks like that way, it looks like it moves with the mechanism or something. So in terms of getting it under there without taking this off, the easiest way to do that, uh, just get a slightly better view there for you, uh, it's probably to feed this, and that slides a little bit, that wheel there, as you can see. Probably to slide this under there like that, I think. Um, perhaps use something just to pull it away. Um, and to try and attach it that way. So it might take a bit of trial and error here, just to get it to the point where it's actually hooked onto, yeah, like that there, you see. As you can see now, if I pull it, it's like that, that's fine. Try and keep the tension. 
um, and just pull it over the motor fitting and then before doing anything else just keep the tension um, I'm going to just use that there to keep the tension that's it, let's just try and rotate it a little bit uh, I can always rotate it a bit in a minute actually just to yeah there we go, that's ok and it's worth just pulling it around like that and just pay attention to the way that the little the rubber is sat, just to make sure it's all the same way it's not like twisting as it goes a particular um, you know, on one side that's fine <laughs> right, so you can see this is actually working but it's uh, sounding like a tractor at the moment um, I think the loading process is starting to work because it did come saying found Ghosts and Goblins um, and I pressed the Commodore key and then it came with the Nova loader so just give that a set, let's just see what happens obviously I'm going to have to take it back to bits to work out what that noise is so there we go, that's working now I'll just quickly show you what the noise was. Well, I don't really know exactly what it was, but I can show you what's causing it. Yeah, so the thing that was causing that noise, that screw there, uh, you've got to unscrew it and then pull this mechanism just a little bit up that way so you're pulling away from that spring. Yeah? And then as you're holding it, then tighten the screw and then the noise stops. The noise was actually coming, you can't really see very well, but um, if I try and get the camera like that, the centre point of that spindle, let's see if I can just point with something. In there, sorry, yeah, the centre point of that spindle, you could perhaps just at the tip that if you look at the tip of the screwdriver there, and just look at the centre, the centre point, of the actual spindle inside, it was something there was making that noise. I don't know what it was. That's exactly where it was coming from. But like I say, just adjusting that bracket a little bit there, and you know, pulling it forward to tension, you know, so you get some tension on that spring there, and the problem goes away. So that was all it was. So I'll give it a try now, see if the game will load. There you go, see, it's found the game, so Commodore key. Should get the Nova loader screen pop up. So I'll just uh, fast forward to when this is finished. On the final stage, you see now, screen's uh, display's just gone off, you know, typically that's because it wants to free up that area of memory uh, for the remaining, you know, few K of code. And there we go, she's loaded. Just turn this up a bit. Stop the turn. Right, so I'll just reassemble this now. That's just the four screws, put them back on, we're all done. Um, just show you, this tape, um, I was just done it the other way around. It is Ghosts and Goblins, you know, it's the original tape I got the other day. Um, it's just that when I tend to get these things, first thing I do, is, I suppose this is good advice really if anybody's got to these tapes and you, you know, if you're buying them, um, I have to reset it actually to get the power back, is, uh, you know, fast forward it, rewind it um, completely to the ends before you actually start to use it, and it just frees the tape up, because a lot of these have been stored for, you know, 15, 20 years or more, um, and you can get problems like that if you don't, you know, sort of tighten it, you know, it retention it effectively by fast forwarding it right to the end and then rewinding it back to the other side, so that was why it was on the other side, but uh, anyway, I'll uh, just put the lid back on now and uh, hold on. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.